May 29th, 2018, Sega Genesis Classics launched on consoles. It's basically a compilation of every retro Sega game ever released on Steam since 2011. That's great, really. And I'm so happy to see Sega games come back into the limelight because that's my entire childhood. But wait, haven't we already seen this before? Yeah, that's right. Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection, which came out February 2009 on Xbox 360 and PS3, gave us practically the exact same game list as this new title, give or take one or two game differences, as in No Echo or Sonic & Knuckles. The biggest difference between this gen and last gen's collection is that the game we got this year is absolutely horrible presentation-wise. Here's your menu and UI. A virtual room of an avid Sega fan. Okay, that's cool, I guess. Well, let's look around. Oh, here's our game shelf. Lots of games to pick from. Let's take a look at eSWAT. Oh wait, you can't. There isn't any box art, information about the game, no summary about what the game's plot is or anything really, nothing. Even dumber, the game doesn't offer any way to view the controls. You're going in blind. You can't even tell how to play this game, let alone any of the games. I grew up in the Sega Genesis era and I understand games were brutal with no guidance or help in beating the game. But every game came with backstory and controls on the box or in the booklet that came with the game. And even if you rented one of these games from like Blockbuster, they would print out a label on the box on the back of it and kind of give you a summary of the game and it would still tell you the controls so that you're not just left with no mechanics and you're just pressing buttons and hoping some combination does something. You were given detailed summary on the game, your goal, and the basic idea of what gameplay it offered. How did the original Sega platform, as in the Master System and Sega Genesis, do a better job of displaying a game to someone? Well, am I doing something wrong? Maybe it's possible to pull this game right off the shelf and get a look at the box art and open it up and check the booklet from there. You know, this is a virtual Sega room. They want me to feel like I'm in this experience, right? Well, I guess not. You can't even pick this fake plastic pixel box off the shelf. It's quintessential junk. Why go to all the trouble of trying to immerse new players into this virtual experience if they can't look inside the game case? Or see the original game art or booklet? Like, look at how easy this is. The box, the book, and now the game. You'll notice an extras tab when you're looking at the game, but there's nothing in there aside from leaderboards or challenges. I wouldn't hate this as much as I do if we didn't have a perfect example of how good an OG Sega collection could be. The 2009 collection did an amazing job of presenting the game. You had a smooth UI that could showcase every game in front of you. You were able to sort through the types you wanted to play. Any game you chose gave you a full display of when that game came out, what it was about, and the controls for playing it. All in front of you, neat and clean. Not to mention that sick main menu theme. There were unlockable games, commentary from developers about each game. There were fun facts about the games and development, even concept art for the games. It's like there was so much emphasis put on creating this stupid fake room that they didn't have a time to consider how lacking the new game looked. It's a blank, soulless husk. <laughs> I should have realized there would be problems going in when I first booted this thing up. It really takes this long. Like one minute just to boot the game. This is a collection of Sega games running on the 8th gen consoles. This can't be demanding on hardware. When you pick a game you want to play, you smack that cartridge into the Sega and play- What? Oh, da, da, da. They don't even have the original cartridge art? Here. I got it. That took seconds. It would have taken an hour or two for one guy to just get a PNG label of every cartridge art in the game. And just crop that shit onto this little cartridge. And there you go. Shows you a little bit about the game. What is the point of any of this? 
You make a room to mimic a Sega fan experience. You have a game shelf that holds all of your games. They sit in plastic boxes, but you're not going to show the art of the boxes. You're just going to show a written label of the game name on the spine of the, the plastic box. And on the cartridge, it's just stock image with text. It, it's this, this grid texture with just the same text written of whatever the game's name is. Why didn't they just use the original cartridge art? They lazed out on every category of this stupid room. It's just unfortunate. The first impression of the title you get from the cover or the cartridge art. And so to take that away, it's just like, it just makes this whole thing more factory and systematic. There's no emotion with any of the games. You don't know anything about them unless you personally play them. But again, even then, like there's no nostalgia here anymore except for just the playing of the game. It's a missed opportunity, and it makes the room look even stupider because it's not doing its job of immersing you. Let's go to the controls and try to alter them. So looking at them, only two options for the input layout exist. One, two. What is that? Why not just let people map the controller however they want? Like, what the hell? Let's look in game. Everything runs fine, the games are playable, and authentic feeling to their original counterpart. Adding to the gameplay, certain games, not all of them mind you, feature a unique challenge to complete. Like not getting hit or using no special moves, collecting a certain number of an item. Now if you mess up early during one of these, you would probably want to restart. Like if it's time based and you were running out of time because you did poor in the beginning, you want to just reset. You don't want to wait till the end of the timer and then have it restart on you. That takes too long. So you would probably want to reset by pressing pause and clicking yes, but that doesn't exist. Anytime you mess up, your punishment is going back to the stupid game shelf every single time, initiating the challenge menu, selecting yes, it loads all the way back onto the TV, and it loads up this mission that you have to restart again. And some of them are beat this level without getting hit, and it's a stupid game. I'm looking at you, Space Harrier 2. While on the subject of challenges, there are many more featured in the last game as well. Every game on the Sonic Collection featured an achievement or unlockable associated with playing it. This could encourage a new player to try out games they may have overlooked normally just from looking at the box art or something. It was a fun time trying to unlock those achievements because they were pretty tough for some of the games and getting the reward of unlocking an additional game or more of the concept art or commentary was always really cool. But now these games just have challenges associated with games you probably don't want to play even and they don't give you anything. Like there's an achievement for doing a lot of the challenges but you know who cares. It doesn't even unlock anything, it's just more of like a I did it sensation. Overall though, I'm just really unhappy with Sega Genesis Classics. It offers many of the same games seen before, while taking away features one would expect from the past. While I have listed many things I dislike, the game did have two new additional functions. The game features the ability to rewind or fast forward mid-game in any of the games. Long walk to town? Fast forward there. Messed up that Chaos Emerald level in Sonic? Rewind and try again. Cool concept and helpful for people, you know, just playing for fun, want to check out these games, maybe they're too tough by today's standards, and you want to balance out the playing field a bit. The other feature is online matchmaking. You can play any of the co-op games online with a friend, which is really cool, but the experience is completely ruined when you realize the fast forward rewind mechanic is still possible online. Player 1 is able to use this while player 2 isn't, so the second player is left trying to figure out if the game is just horribly laggy all the time or if the teleporting around is actually just player 1 playing with the time function. They didn't think about this stuff at all apparently because the time move ability should have been turned off online or at least given a toggle for players who don't want it. That's not even counting how unfair it is that you could be playing like Golden Axe and your teammate could just rewind every time he gets hit and you're left just getting owned because that guy sucks and isn't just playing the game properly. 
It's easy enough to say that this collection gets the job done if you want Sega games on your Xbox One or PS4. If you were a big fan of those Sega games back in the past, you're going to have them on your new platforms now and they are going to play the same and you can play them local or online. But is this the best collection seen to date on any platform? Hell no! The best hands down is Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection on the PS3 and Xbox 360. The Steam version is also okay, but it's gonna cost you a little more unless you get it on sale. But the Ultimate Genesis Collection, you can pick up still for like $15 at Walmart and GameStop, and it's definitely worth that if you have the platform to play it on. We all love Sega, but you can't put out a game like this and not expect a little unhappiness from fans. Especially when you were the ones who put out a game prior, more than 10 years ago almost, that is a superior title. Next time they need to take the time to really play test this stuff and give us the most definitive game possible. Thank you all for checking out this video. Please go ahead and sub to the channel if you liked it. Leaving a like or comment helps support the channel. This is Dima Fox Yoko, signing out.